Okay, this video is a book review, and this is the book right here, The Anxious Generation. Um, this is by Jonathan Haid. He is a psychology professor at a college in New York. Um, so the book was kind of interesting. I mean, it was too long. I don't know, a couple hundred pages. It could have, it could have been like a 50-page essay. You know, they don't really have much to say, a psychologist, so they just drag it out. But he still said some good stuff, and there were some good lines in it. Okay, so here's the main point of the whole book was basically the more kids use a cell phone and social media, the more messed up the kids get. Um, so the more they're on their cell phone or on social media, this is for teenagers, you know, junior high kids, high school kids, college kids, the more anxiety they have, that's why he calls them the anxious generation, off the charts, uh, the more depression they have, like the colleges have a massive increase in the children complaining of anxiety and depression, more self-harm, girls are hurting themselves, um, he says the girls are more affected by the bo than the boys, which I was kind of surprised by that. He says what happens is the girls see all these beautiful girls, skinny beautiful girls on um, Instagram and Snapchat, and then they feel jealous and sad because they think, oh, I'll never be that beautiful, I'll never find a man, I'll never have kids, I'll never be happy, all this stuff. And they start, you know, like, like being mad at themselves and getting very psychologically upset by it. I was kind of surprised by that. That was interesting because I always think about how men think. I don't think I'm... Um, Girls or women think that much. I don't understand them too well. But anyways, um, the boys become more impulsive, uh, unhappy, and they have a fragmented attention. They're kind of skittish, you know, like the monkey mind um, rather than the thoughtful uh, mind. So anyways, basically, then also their resilience is weak. People talk about the fragility of the kids. They're kind of like real weak-minded, and they're, they don't read much. Uh, their social skills deteriorate. Their academic skills... Basically, it decreases their ability to cope with the real world. It's bad. Uh, I'll talk some more about all the problems here. I mean, I can just tell you, you don't want to give your kid a cell phone if you can avoid it or delay it as long as possible. A flip phone, a flip phone is better because they can just talk on the phone. You don't want one where it's connected to the Internet. The more Internet time they spend, the worse, the stupider they get. Okay, here's a little bit about the generations, you know, the, the so-called... Uh, Silent generation, you know, with World War II, the baby boomers, I'm sort of of that generation. Um, and then there's Gen X came after that. Um, and then the millennials and then the Generation Z is the main one uh, starting to get affected by this. Gen Z, they'll call it. Generation Alpha would be like recently born kids. So anyways, Gen Z, because it was right around 2007 when Steve Jobs introduced the first iPhone. And then by 2007, what the author of this book, Jonathan Hayde, he says that the play-based childhood, like, you know, when we were kids, we played sports. We ran around and played sports, whatever it was. You know, I, there were tons of kids when I was growing up. I didn't have to need a parent special friend day. I just walked down the street, knocked on my friend's door, said, hey, you want to, you know, play kickball, softball, whatever. And there was a bunch of kids around because you know, there were big families back in those days. All right, so... Um, Nowadays, he says, after 2010, pretty much the previous ch play-based childhood, you know, we'd play softball, kickball, all kinds of sports, football, basketball. Now, he says, instead, the kids have a, a phone-based childhood where they're always doing social media or playing video games. Um, and the kids are not doing well. They're, they're messed up in comparison with how kids used to be in the past. A lot of psycho psychological illness. Okay, now this guy's a college professor. He announces that he's an atheist, so he kind of buys into the, a lot of that whole mentality, you know, of uh, college professors. So we're not going to get into that too much, but, you know, talking about meditation and Buddha and all this stuff, I'm like, give me a break. But he does say some good things. He says uh, the, the cell phone with all the, the apps is like a digital Swiss Army knife. There's over 1 million apps available for a cell phone, draining the battery down real fast. He says, because of cell phones, we are always elsewhere, you know. The people are always looking at their phone. I've seen times I walk into a room, nobody's talking to each other, everybody's looking at their cell phones. I've seen family events where all the kids are just looking at their cell phones, not talking to anybody. Um, he says, there's an over-enthusiastic promotion of technology in America, sort of an irrational techno-optimism. Um, Flip phones, he said, didn't really hurt kids too much. A little bit, but not that bad. But he said the smartphones are a very big deal because now kids are connected to the Internet 24-7 and they fret over what strangers and schoolmates think of them. The more they use these uh, Internet cell phones, the more the high schools and the college have children with psychological, almost like mental illness of 
I wouldn't use the word mental illness. Let's just say anxiety, depression, self-harms in girls more than boys, attention fragmentation. They're kind of stupid. They can't pay attention. I've had young people tell me, oh, they can't watch a video. They just watch shorts. And I'm like, you know, that's not good at your age. Come on. Usually a younger person should have a sharper brain. They just don't know much. You know, they don't got much experience or knowledge, but not being able to pay attention, that's bad. How can you learn anything if you can't pay attention? They become addicted to their phones. I've seen that. Everybody has seen that who's had kids with a cell phone. They're not sleeping as much as they should. They've got more insomnia. The boys are becoming more irritable and impulsive. Bad. Um, their academic performance is going down in the garbage can. Uh, they get a sense, many of them, of loss of meaning in life, um, a sense of spiritual degradation. They're less happy. It's all bad. Um, I jokingly would say that face-to-face -face confrontation is like conversation is like a low-fat vegan diet. Flip phone is like the grass-fed beef, that type of stuff. Uh, internet cell phones are like processed food and junk food. Okay, they're all bad. Um, kids are spending an average of over four hours a day, this is teenagers, playing with their phone on average because they've got 24-7 internet connected to them. The cell phones are more popular even than TV used to be. When I was a kid, a lot of people would sit around watching reruns all day. The more TV a kid watched, the worse a student they were in school. Um, the girls, like I said, are freaked out because they're not as pretty as some skinny supermodel on Instagram and Snapchat. They feel like they can never compete with them, so they become all sad and lowers their self-esteem, and they get psychologically kind of messed up by that. Um, body image issues. Boys tend to watch more YouTube videos, play online games, but the boys are being feminized. You know, they're kind of wimpy and pussified compared to how guys were when I was young. I remember that. I see that. Um, and there's more of a failure to launch type of thing with boys. There's also more of this MG toe, men going their own way. They're sort of like, they don't want to get married. They've seen their father's divorce turn into divorce mules, sold into slavery, of having to give all their money, you know, booted out of their houses. So they're like, man, I'm not getting married. And then the women don't want to have babies anymore. Women think, you know, having a job is going to make them happy. They don't realize that a job is just a pain in the ass. They could be replaced in two seconds until they hit their mid-30s. A lot of them are infertile. But what I see is the men, the women are being masculinized. The men are being feminized. And they're not having as much to do with each other as they used to. Lots of guys are incels, involuntary celibates. Um, and they don't intend to ever marry a woman. They'll replace them with just P-O-R-N-O, -O, okay, as far as they're concerned. And I think a lot of women and men are going to be very unhappy. We naturally go together to be together with each other. So I think a lot of these women, they're delaying their child and they're never going to have a husband, okay? I see it. I mean, I've seen the dating apps too. They're a disaster. Okay, um, let's see. What does uh, J.H., the author, recommend? He says, delay buying the cell phone for kids as long as you can. He says, probably best to wait at least until high school. I think that's good advice. I had big disagreements with my wife about buying, about buying cell phones for the kids. I said, no, don't buy them a cell phone, especially not before high school. She's like, oh, everyone has a cell phone. How am I going to talk to the kid? How's the kid going to call me for a ride home? I said, you know what? They can use their friend's phone. They can use their friend's family's house phone. Um, once, like, for example, my daughter, she used to always read a lot of books, and all the, the boys in my family said, oh, gee, she is the smartest kid, and she's always reading books, and she would talk to me about her books. As soon as mama bought her cell phone, the kid never read another book again, never discussed a book with me again, just wants to be with their friends. That's what happens to kids. As soon as, you know, at least before, they'll have a conversation with you, like a regular person. As soon as they get a cell phone, shoot, they're gone. They're just going to be texting their friends all day. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know what you want to do. What do you want to do? Okay, and then the boys say the F word all day long, and the girls say it's like, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like. That's how they talk. You can tell. You can, you can, you can judge the age of a kid. If they say it's like, it's like, it's like a girl, that's a girl, like, you know, 15 to 20 years of age. You hear a boy saying this effing thing, this effing thing, this effing thing. That's a boy like about 15 to 25 years of age. Okay, um, let's see. What else? After they got the phone, uh, the boys would sleep with the phones near their head. I have to go in their bedroom and say, don't have your phone next to your head at night or take it away. Then they, they go into conniptions, um, apeshit bananas, and it was, it was ridiculous, okay? Um, J.H. emphasized that um, kids nowadays are over-supervised, in his opinion, to not go outside. He says you should let them go outside, run around more all over the place. That was a little bit of a strange thing the way he said that, but that was one point he emphasized. He also said that schools should not allow phones all day. I thought that sounded like a good idea, that instead of letting the kids, instead of telling the kids you can't just use it during class, he says they should be put in the phone lockers and not allowed to take the phones out of the phone lockers all day. 
Um, I thought that was a good idea because he says they have no attention span. Even if they're allowed in class, they tend to take their phone out as soon as they can as class is over, even start trying to look at it under their desk and stuff, and it fragments their attention. They don't do well in school. Uh, my thought, too, was he blames everything on the device and social media, but I think it's also because you're exposed to the craziness of the Internet, just the intrinsic craziness of it and all the cultural stuff that goes with it. But also, I think, you know, the EMF. Kids holding a cell phone next to their head all day. They're opening up their voltage-gated calcium channels all day, and that's not good for their brain. So, anyways, it was an interesting book. It could have been a lot shorter, but it still was, I, I thought, had a lot of interesting stuff in it. And the bottom line, the more time a kid spends with a cell phone and Internet cell phone activities the stupider and more unhappy the kid becomes and it potentially gets the kid into problems in their life. They're a bad thing.